Hi there, and welcome to another video tutorial from Confal Iris. Today we'll be making this watercolour card with a lighthouse scene. The materials you need are all listed below in the video description and in more detail over on my blog. To begin with, I stamped the lighthouse image on a piece of 300gsm white cardstock cut to a half inch smaller than the near 6 card front. I then stamped the sentiment, wishing you a beautiful day, twice. I used archival ink in sepia because this is water resistant. I then used a, a Faber Castell pit pen to draw on the scene. This is in the colour raw umber. So I drew a foreground with a little hillock off to the left and then continued on the steps in front of the lighthouse and just added in some shading to make it look like a cliff and a couple of tufts of grass. To separate the sea and sky, there needs to be a flat horizon. I drew this on using an Spectrum Noir alcohol marker in TB2. This is also because this is water resistant. To make sure everything is dry, I dried it off with a heat gun. And using artist masking tape, I tape this down, leaving a very thin white border around the edge to a sketchboard. This means that when we add lots of water to the card, it's not going to buckle quite as much as it otherwise would. Here I'm using Windsor & Newton Cotton Watercolour Paints and a number 9 round brush in gold tacklon. I'm swirling it around a little bit to add some texture to the sky and I'm using the colour Cerulean Blue for the sky. I'm not going to edit very much of the watercolouring. If this is something you like or if you think it takes too long, please let me know in the comment section below. To make sure the sea and sky don't blend together too much, after doing the sky I'm moving on to the land and the foreground. For this I'm using the colour raw sienna and a very light wash to begin with. I then decided to add in a bay with some sand and so using the same colour but with less water I get a higher intensity of colour. In real life, the foreground will probably be green, but I kind of like the look of a vintage postcard, something that faded so much that it now looks kind of yellow and brown, but the blue I saw it intense because the idea is someone needs to have a beautiful day and the sea and sky need to be a lovely colour of blue. For the sea, I'm using intense blue. And to make sure there's lots of definition between the sea and sky, I'm adding lots of intense colour right at the edge on the horizon. This is where the alcohol line really helps. I'm adding darker colour nearer the lighthouse, and at a later point in the video I'll start flicking it out. This is to make it look better some high ground, but almost is casting a shadow. In some shadows, I'm using burnt umber. I'm painting the stairs in burnt umber and the sides of the hill. And then the lovely thing about watercolour is you can apply some intense colour and then using just a wet brush you can drag it out and make it blend in. I prefer painting wet on dry, but some people prefer wet on wet. Just use whatever you prefer.
to make the lighthouse seem round, I'm applying intense colour at the edges and then blending this out with water to a lighter colour in the middle. If I was going for a more modern looking card, I'd probably leave a strip of white in the middle, but on this card everything is nice and faded. At one point I decided I was going to leave the houses white, but this looked far too stark against this background, and so I used a little bit of um, raw sienna on these as well. There you might have noticed I used a little bit too much water and some burnt umber went into some raw sienna. Don't worry though, watercolour is one of the most forgiving mediums to work with because you can just apply a paper towel and pick up the ink while it's still wet. Nobody need ever know. To apply some more intense shadows and some darker details, the colour I'm using is Van Dyke Brown. Make sure everything is dry, I'm just giving it a quick blast with the heat ink, and I'm very carefully peeling away the artist's masking tape. You can see it's left just a very narrow border around the edge, and this paper hasn't walked very much at all, I was very impressed. To add some detail on the edges, I'm using a mini ink blending tool and some distress ink in vintage photo. This adds kind of a vignette and, believe it or not, a vintage photo look. Going all around the edge does change the colour of the watercolours in places, but I really like this effect. To finish off this distressed old postcard kind of look, I'm using a paper distresser just around the edge, it just has a little blade, you could do this with a pair of scissors. And then I'm putting in some notches with a pair of scissors, and peeling back the paper just to give it some dimension, otherwise this would be a very flat card. Of course the paper distressing does get rid of some of that ink that you put around the edge, so I'm just going around and adding a more intense dark line around the edges. This provides a frame as well as covering up any white areas that might be seen. I'm using lots of tape adhesive on the back, but making sure not to go over the areas that I want to stick up. And that's the card front done. For the inside, I kind of wanted to add a little bit of sparkle and a little bit of a surprise. I've stamped the sentiment, the world is your oyster, in sepia archival ink so that everything matches. And then I've stamped this oyster in a shell, twice, with sepia archival ink, in the top of the card. I'm using a Versa marker to apply some sticky ink, first to the pearl, and then applying some Pearlex powders in white pearl to make it really shimmer and shine in the light. I'm just using a brush that I've kind of overused a little too much and made very soft, so I use this for mica powders. For the rest of the shell, I'm filling in with Versa Mark ink, and then I'm using Antique Silver as the colour of Pearlex powder, and then using a grey coloured pencil that's very blendable to fill in the inside of the shell, just so there's not too much shine. And that's the card done. Do an envelope. I'm doing it the same way uh, for an A6 card. It's 8 and 3 eighths of an inch square, and then punching at 3 and a half inches on the VR Memory Keeper's 1, 2, 3 punch board. This has a beautiful design on the inside, and a kind of distressed and laid back look on the outside, which I kind of like. And then just using tape to keep it all together. It's quite a flat card. For the outside, in the stamp set, there was this kind of rope border, so I'm using that just around the edge with some archival ink and sepia. Using archival ink means that if I decide to send this through the post, it's not going to run everywhere when the postman has to deliver in the rain. 
but it didn't really line up properly. So in order to finish off and lining up, so excuse my head, uh, and lining up the stamp and then using a baby wipe to wipe off the area which I don't want to stamp. So there's only ink in the area which will go between. And then I'm just following that all around the edge of the line break. To finish off, I like to add a bit of fabric to my envelope, something a bit different. So I'm using some natural string, just wrapping it around three or four times, tying a knot in it and cutting off the excess. It also holds the envelope closed. So I'll leave you with some stills at the end of this video. Thanks very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, maybe got a little bit inspired. If you did like it, please hit the like button below the video and subscribe to my channel to see more like this in the future. You can also head over to my blog for more information and follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.